start saying uh, early childhood i don't have memories of seeing much of the films because in our household my grandfather used to be very against television and films and stuff like that but we had uh, a kind of uh, habit of listening to stories so my grandmother used to tell us lots of stories and uh, we used to read a lot from ramayana mahabharata and stuff like that and we used we would go as a child in our imagination how things were and that's fantasy world of uh, all the epics really influenced me as a storyteller later when television came to our household the doordarshan the afternoon uh, national award uh, films used to be shown of various languages and i used to get awed i would not understand anything but i was to get awed by those films and the way they were being told the camera work and the sound and the dialogues and the acting and stuff like that i would not understand any of these definitions that time at all the songs of chitrahar and uh, the sunday evening films uh, old films shown on the version i could say i can say that these are uh, early influences for me and later when dd metro came into being the world cinema came into my life like i saw tarkovsky that time i saw hasar <laughs> ray that time i saw many other filmmakers which i would never have heard i would again discover i discovered tarkovsky again in film school i would not know which tarkovsky which like people laugh at it which whiskey and stuff like that but you know so those but those images remained in my mind uh, and that's all that's all i can say my first interest in cinematography was all by accident uh, i had a friend in my uh, class whose brother has left his engineering career and became photographer and i used to hang around with him we could not afford a no, camera and stuff like that but i would be really intrigued by the way uh, he was taking photograph he would be passionately uh, behind the lens and waiting for those moments and he showed me none of his friends none of his friends and none of his brothers were interested and when he saw my interest in uh, hanging around with him he used to share his his uh, photographs and uh, his books photograph photography books with me and that's how i got probably interested in photography but i did not have any interest or idea that i will make i will become a cinematographer one day not not a chance because uh, uh in our household we were completely engineering management and stuff like that in middle class family in indian typical we were typical middle uh, indian middle class family all my uh, cousins are my, uh, in some vice presidents and ceos and stuff like that and i was also going to be one of them uh i was pursuing my career in uh, software engineering one fine day i said this is enough i can't survive this uh, close environment and being best coder in the world and go to us and be the part of silicon valley as a no and then joined a film school in pune and fortunately and down there so like i was saying uh, uh, one of my cousins had uh, given entrance for uh, fti for an editing uh, course and he was not selected i said why would you not be selected there and i was bugged with my software and i said i and i was also interning for one of the major software giants at that time uh i would say my cousin inspired me to go check my uh, current uh, the career of that time and do and follow my heart and my heart was uh, with film making i think which i came to realize once i joined fdii during my stay in fdii i had honed my skills i think uh, and uh, i did not know how industry functions at all uh, people used to, many of my batchmates and uh, my seniors used to come to bombay and uh, work with some talk first work in production houses but i did not have that uh, i any idea how everything works i was training myself as a cinematographer i was working hard i was going by the book i was doing everything in the book uh, to train myself i was making a hell lot of mistakes a lot of mistakes i made in uh, during my uh, stay in fdi uh, from and we were fortunate to get all the material 
because it is one of the best film schools in the world and top best film schools in the in our country we had everything to our disposal at end of the course i i thought i have already become a cinematographer when course finished and there was a time there was a time where i had to choose where do i go to work i was thoroughly confused <laughs> Whether I should go to Calcutta, whether I should go to Bombay, uh, I wanted to assist two, three people, but all the people are, were from South, like Santosh, Shivan, and uh, Venu, and stuff like that. I tried to approach them, but it not did not work out uh, because of the language barrier and stuff and their uh, busy schedule. So I dropped that idea. I came to Bombay. I was exploring, and I started working as an independent photographer. I did not assist assist anyone for. Uh, for doing assisting at all. I started doing documentaries, I started doing corporate films, I, I started doing whatever was coming my way. Uh, that's all. But yes, a uh, couple of my seniors asked me to uh, assist them because they needed assistant that time and their regular assistant had ran away. So I did assist uh, Prakash Kutti uh, in one of his films called Tumile as an associate and as well as also worked as a uh, second unit uh, cinematographer. That was also a long, long time back. Uh, but apart from him, I don't remember assisting anyone at all. But yes, assisting helps in a way of actually, if once you're a graduate of a film school like FTI, my personal feeling is that you don't need to assist anyone. You can find your own path. But assisting helps you to understand the industry where you're working and how the industry works, what are the nuances of the industry, how the big production or small production is getting lined up. Because when you're in film school, everything is given to you. You are not dependent on, and you're not asking someone to give you work. But when you come out of the film school, you are asking someone to give you work as a cinematographer. So these are two completely different things. Assisting helps you in two ways. One how the industry works, to understand how the industry works, and second, what style of working you want to follow, and how do you ad adjust yourself. So two film projects came by uh, me. Uh, so I was, like I said, I was working with Prakash Kutti. So he had started an uh, independent film, and uh, he was sure that he would not be continuing his, uh, this uh, film till the end of the schedule because he was he was becoming a busy busy cinematographer so he called me be part of my team and then you take over this film project after one week of my shooting so i joined him and uh, that was way back in 2006 just out of the institute i was fortunate to uh, uh, get a independent offer just after the institute uh, in 2006 itself and the film was called vatsala it got made, but it never got released. And just after that, I got a mail from Hemant Gaba uh, that he's looking. He's making his first film, and uh, and he's based in US, and uh, he's a software person, and he wants to meet me. I said, okay, terrific. And when we met, we kind of liked each other, and that's how my first film on film got materialized it's called shuttlecock boys and that remains very close to my heart and Hemant remains one of the best persons i have ever worked with for me two things uh, become very important when i'm uh, looking for a project uh, uh, the script has to have a engaging narrative Number one, and second thing, it should invoke an experience inside me. I don't look at a script only as a from cinematography point of view. I look at script from a film, complete film point of view. I think like a filmmaker. What is the script telling me? Is it uh, appealing to me as a viewer? Is it appealing to me as an artist? Is it appealing to me as a cinematographer? So these three factors. I take into account. 
See, I am a learned cinematographer. Uh, I have studied cinematography in film school. But I have, during the uh, last decade, I have come across many, many brilliant cinematographers uh, who have not gone to any film school and they have learned cinematography on the job. They are, Subrata Mitra was not a learned uh, cinematographer, he was a photographer. Satyajit Ray took him as a cinematographer because he was a good photographer. So it mix of both. You, you can learn cinematography, but while practicing the cinematography on ground, on field, you have to have the intuition as well. And you have to be intuitive because there are so many decisions you take, uh, not only because you have learned cinematography, but it is the demand of that particular moment. Because filmmaking is such a vast and uh, vast area where many things can be planned, but all your plan can go wrong. And at that moment in time, you have to take many decisions to make things happen. So I would say it's a mix of, very good mix of both. You have to be intuitive as a cinematographer as well as you learn cinematography as an art form. The last film which got released of mine was called Wedding Anniversary, which starred uh, Nana Patikar, Mahi Gil, Priyanshu Chatterjee uh, and uh, lead roles. Uh, that film was very good film for me in terms of because I was working with uh, big artists for the first time. Uh, so I got to understand many, many things, the dynamics of working with stars and dynamics of working with uh, big people and how silently you can work with uh, uh, veteran actors like Nana around and uh, like that. And the script was also very nice. I was very excited about the film. I don't know how film did on box office because that's not a cinematographer's area of concern. But as a filmmaker, as an artist, as a cinematographer, I really enjoyed working there. And recently I have come, just now I returned from uh, hill town of Dehradun. I was shooting a, a comedy film. It was an out and out comedy. Uh, it's untitled right now. Uh, so I quite, I, I quite enjoyed the entire process of uh, being part of a comedy film where there are so many people and there are so many uh, ideas floating and we, uh, it was the film is like Malamal Weekly and Dhamal in that category. So I'm, re I have, I'm reading uh, uh, four, uh, five scripts right now and all are on different genres. I'm pretty excited that a couple of them are commercial projects and uh, a couple of them are very artistic and very sensible projects in my hand uh, that it's very premature to uh, give the details whom I'm talking to what are the projects which is going on right now but I'm really excited that three four films are going to be shot this year which are being talked and they are almost confirming uh, the dates are being confirmed right now I'm really excited about uh, coming time Every cinematographer wants to work uh, with uh, work on films which are exciting and have uh, large scale and appeals to audience and go being appreciated by uh, many people. So my dream projects are a lot. There are so many uh, uh, films which uh, I would want to be part of, and I want to get associated with uh, many of the filmmakers who are. Uh, in our country and as well as outside so yeah so right now when i think of it uh, my most memorable blender is uh, long back when we were doing a multi camera setup and it uh, and uh, that digital technology was just coming into uh, into being it was long long back and I was working on uh, one of the digital cameras uh, and in the action sequence was going on. And the, I was handling the camera which was next to the blast scene. I was most close to the uh, uh, glass setup with the safety glass in front of camera and I'm uh, putting myself under bunker. And when I switched on the, cam switched on the camera, uh, it, the directors started saying action roll camera, camera was rolling and action director said blast <laughs> and the, uh, the car in front of me got blasted and I was holding camera and by mistake at that particular time 
I switched it off. My hand went like this and it switched off the camera. And then I realized, oh my God, it's, it switched it off. And then I switched it on again. When they replay the footage, the chunk which was blasted, it was not there in the tape. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, what did I do? And uh, I said, I don't know what happened. I could not tell anyone that this is what happened. Fortunately, there were 10 cameras, so they got footage and they were not really bothered. But that camera was the most crucial camera that time. And that I have not told this to anyone till now. <laughs> I'm telling this to you. My first film, which I shot with uh, Heman, uh, Shalcock Boys, we, it remains close to my heart because we really gave, gave our 100% in terms of your passionate. We had no budget. We had uh, to do everything by ourselves. But as a cinematographer, uh, the film called Ballad of Rustam, which was shortlisted in 2014 Oscars and uh, uh, produced and directed by one of my seniors from film school, Ajita Suchitravira. Till now, that is my best work. Uh, I feel that because I really prepared for that film for more than two years. And apart from that, uh, every film like Wedding Anniversary is also very close to my heart uh, because first time I worked on a uh, glamour photography the way I uh, see myself uh, right now. Uh, that's all. Otherwise, all the films remain very close and all the work remains very close to my heart whether it is commercial, whether it's documentaries, uh, which I have done many documentaries, all the documentaries and work I have done for Satyamev Jayate, while I've traveled all over the country for more than three years, that remains, that also remains very close to my heart. Now the technology is uh, such uh, that it has become really, really easy to make films nowadays. So I would advise filmmakers to work on script because what we are lacking right now are good scripts from coming from young filmmakers because nowadays accessibility towards camera and sound and editing machine has become really really easy that also i feel has made us a little bit frivolous in our approach towards filmmaking but now if you really work on your script in a, uh, diligently and uh, tell your narrative uh, you know present your narrative in a better form just go out and make it whatever you wanted to make because the technology is with you. I tend to read a lot. I read everything under the sun. Like I read fiction, I read non-fiction, I listen to every kind of music uh, from uh, Western classical to Indian classical to Bollywood to uh, Oriental music to blues, everything I uh, listen depends on what is the mood of the day and how, what, I'm, what I want to listen to that time. Like I said, I read a lot. I read a lot of Hindi literature. I read lots of international literature. Now, nowadays, I am uh, reading lots of philosophy that also interests me and also lots of poetry. So it's very difficult to pinpoint what is my taste because I read and listen and I am a lot. Like one can say that I consume a lot of uh, things uh, every time. I've been a member of uh, WICA for uh, some time now and it has helped me in uh, uh, many ways. Uh, the one is uh, getting my uh, payments from the producers whenever it has got stuck uh, for the uh, for my payment and my assistant's payment, they have really come into picture and uh, broken the uh, piece, brokered with the uh, piece with, uh, and it has got sorted amicably. The second thing which they have done, they have provided a very good contract and support contract support system to their members, which has really helped a lot of uh, their members like me and my many of my colleagues. Third thing they have done, they keep uh, sending you emails and uh, about the latest technology and keep organizing the workshops uh, uh, about the latest technology which is happening in the field of cinematography and uh, invite not only the cinematographers but also the filmmakers. So I think Vika is really doing a good job and uh, I would uh, request
request them to keep doing it and be more active about it.